What's up guys and welcome back to another Reddit reading video. Let's get right into the stories. My sister and I just compared childhood stories about creatures we thought we imagined. But everything lines up. My sister and I were reminiscing on our favorite childhood memories when I decided to tell her about the creatures I used to think I saw behind our old house. She told me she saw the same exact things. Both of our stories lined up so perfectly that it actually freaked us out and we had to stop talking about it. Several years ago, we were in northwestern Oregon. We've since moved states. We lived in St. Helens, in a house with a huge wooded area behind it. We always played and explored back there. When I was back there, sometimes I would see movement in the corner of my vision. Whenever I would look over to see what it was, I would see one of these things. I never really saw them at the same time. The first one was tall dark and super lanky. It walked on all fours and just looked sickly. When I turned to look at it, it would freeze in place, then just bolt further into the forest. It looked leathery, with only a little bit of hair on its legs and neck. It always looked like it had big ears or antlers, but I could never tell for sure. I never saw its face. When it stood still, it had a solid shape. Whenever it bolted, it was like it lost its shape and the edges of it were constantly shifting. The second one scared me more. It had the same lanky legs and walked on all fours, but the body was disproportionately larger than the legs. It also looked like it had more hair than the other one. I would always see it just before or after the first one I described. It also had the same weird ears or antlers, but it was always standing somewhere dark, unlike the first one which always seemed to not mind light as long as there were lots of trees. I never saw it move. It would just stand there when I saw it, and disappear when I blinked or looked away. I also saw this one's face, and it had these huge, milky white eyes with no pupils. Sometimes I would catch it watching me from behind, between trees. They both were about the size of a large horse or something. We could also hear branches snap whenever the smaller one bolted. The first few times I saw them, I was scared shitless. Before I saw the first one, I'd always just feel a little anxious and like I was being watched. Before I saw the second one, I'd felt the same way but would also get a strong sense of dread to go along with it. After a while, as child me got more accustomed to seeing them, I'd whisper greetings to them. They'd stick around a few seconds longer than usual whenever I did, like they could hear my whispers. Eventually, I felt more comfortable with them being there. I didn't feel the dread or fear after a few years of seeing them. Something told me to not try and get close, but as long as I respected our distance, I almost felt safer knowing they were there. I even saw the large one, because of its eyes, in the forest outside my bedroom window one night when it was raining. I told my sister all of this, and she started freaking out, saying she thought they were like weird imaginary friends. If I had to describe something that vaguely resembles them, I'd say like a cross between a deer, a bear, a large one, a sickly wolf, a small one, and a man, like a wendigo almost but not quite the same. They never seemed evil either, just scared me at first. They might have just been some freaked up animals, but that doesn't feel right to me for some reason. I might add more details tomorrow, because I'm tired af right now. Just wanted to share while it was fresh. Edit, forgot to describe the feet. I never saw them as clearly, but my little sister said they looked like a cross between paws and some really weird hands. They had longish toes that looked like fingers, I guess. Also, the little one could usually be first spotted with either one or both of its front legs. Arms folded against its chest. He would put them down to walk, run. The larger one never moved like that in front of us. I always had this feeling in my gut that it didn't trust us enough to do so. Between my sister and I, we kind of agreed on the feelings they gave us. Though there were some differences, she felt more of a connection to the small one and I felt more of a connection to the big one. Simple explanation could be that I'm the oldest and she's the youngest. Not sure what a spiritual explanation would be for that, if there even is one. At first, we were both terrified and would bolt whenever we saw them. I would get this sense of paranoia and later dread. I also felt very protective over the small one and respectful of the larger one. It felt like they knew where we were at all times, even if we couldn't see them. As time passed and we grew used to them, the fear and dread went away. It just became all in silent respect. I also felt safer in the forest, as if we had something watching over us back there. My sister would bring them snacks, leftovers, and books, and I built them a lean-to. A homeless dude took that as his home. Police came by to give him a ride to a shelter, and we unfortunately had to take it down. I also remember looking out my bedroom window on the night while it was raining, 
Same night I mentioned originally, I'd been having nightmares and was listening to the rain. After my eyes adjusted to the dark, I spotted the big one. I almost missed it, but the eyes stood out like a sore thumb. It startled me because I wasn't expecting it, but then I felt super calm and was able to fall back asleep. No more nightmares, again. They might just be a pair of unidentified, sickly animals, but they still helped me feel safe and awe and wonder as a child. Shout out to those guys. FR. Edit 2. Grammar mistakes. Also huge thank you to the folks that gave the upvotes and awards. I never expected this post to get any attention. Just thought it would be fun to share this semi-spooky, semi-wholesome story from my childhood. So again, thank you. Edit 3. So. I kinda forgot about this post for a little while. Whoops. I finally remembered to do the sketches. I'm happy with the first one of the smaller creature. But I'm still trying to figure out how to draw out the larger one. But for now, have this. If anyone is still. My uncle's schizophrenia origin story according to him. My uncle was schizophrenic and said he thinks this is how he got his schizophrenia. He said he was walking through Louisiana. Hitchhiked a lot for fun and decided to stop into a gas station to get a drink because he was thirsty. Before he walked in, a man approached him. The man, as he described him, was very shady. He said it seemed the man had a darkness about him even though it was sunny out. Very tall with bad teeth, he asked my uncle to put his hand out and put a weird looking coin in it. He said it seemed like a very old coin. The man told him as long as you hold on to this coin good luck will always be yours. But if you lose it or throw it away terrible things will happen to you and your life will fall apart. My uncle thought it was very weird but said thank you then went into the gas station and bought a soda and a dollar scratch ticket. He won $250 on the scratch ticket. He was freaked out at this point. He came back outside and the man that had given him the coin was nowhere to be found. My uncle walked down the road and, always being a religious person, threw the coin into the swamp and kept walking as fast as he could trying to get a ride home back to West Virginia because he was so scared at that moment. Again, he was schizophrenic so it's totally possible this was the beginning of his illness and it was totally real to him. But I've always wondered, I was stalked for a month and had no clue. I walked to most places because being severely visually impaired obviously can't drive. I walk at night during summer, which lasts anywhere from April to October if we're lucky. This is probably not the safest idea, but I'm from Texas so temperatures of 100 degrees aren't unusual. One of my usual destinations was a convenience store a few blocks from my previous house. I set out one night normally to get myself some Pepsi and a candy stash. Our town isn't very big and most people drive everywhere. It's very unusual to come across anyone else on my route to the store. But that night a man appeared out of nowhere and started talking like he knew me. He asked me where I was going and I told him. It wasn't unusual for people to keep watch on me because hard of hearing blind girl with forearm crutches. This guy had no reason to be there and was walking way too close beside me. He asked me where I was going and I told him just in case I was overreacting. I sped up as much as I could since this part of the road is very dark with only a subway that had closed for the night. He definitely wasn't there for a $5 foot long. I tried to appear calm, though the alarm bells were ringing and I was shaking to the point I was afraid I'd drop a crutch which was probably the worst thing that could write then, especially after started asking what I liked in the bedroom and he could easily have his way with me in the ditch and no one would know. You felt sick but continued my walk. The store was only about 20 yards away. I knew the guy that was on the graveyard shift. I got safely inside and my friend handed me a bag to carry my stuff in until I was ready to check out. And when I got up to the register he began speaking loudly enough that my ears hurt and I had to turn my hearing aids down because it hurt my ears. Hey sweets, did you ever find my 3DS? I played along and he opened the half door thing and I sat on the stool like it was normal. Creepy dude came over and slammed his Bud Light and a 10 on the counter. After being handed his change, he went outside. He's still out there by the ice machine. After about 20 minutes, he still hadn't left. My friend called his manager and after explaining the situation, she told him to lock up and run me home. He did and even walked me to my door. I put the key in the door and we stepped inside. Catherine said to give you this. He handed me a keychain and showed me how to lick and unlock the pepper spray. Call us before you come from now on. He's coming after you for the last four weeks. He left and I made sure every door and window was locked. So, creepy dude, let's never meet again. Man in the window, this probably isn't nearly as scary as a lot of the stories on this sub but it is definitely one of the creepier things I've experienced. 
This happened some years ago, I was 20 I think. I was going on a road trip of a sort with a really good friend of mine and his family. Our destination was a concert in a country next to ours, but we would be stopping at night to sleep in the camper we drove in. We hadn't crossed the border yet when we stopped at the first campsite for the night. Now it seemed like a pretty family friendly and safe place so none of us had our guards up or anything. That night at about 11 p.m. or so, while my friend and his family were getting ready for bed, I went outside to get some fresh air. Our camper was almost completely next to the beach so I went down to the shore to dip my feet and get some much needed quiet time by myself. On the way there I passed by a beach shack, a detail that will be important later as I stood there letting the waves lap over my feet. I noticed the silhouette of a man further down the beach, but it was a public space for campers so I didn't think much of it. After being absorbed by splashing in the water with my feet and enjoying the moonlight I decided to make my way back. Of course it was very dark given the late hour, but I didn't get scared easily. Now as a woman in the modern world I usually do stay on my guard after dark, but that thought never occurred to me since I felt I was in a safe environment so close to the campsite. Anyways, as I was walking back I noticed that the silhouette of the man further down the beach was gone. But even more worrying was the fact that as I was nearing the beach shack I saw that someone seemed to be trying to hide from my view behind it. Immediately I was on alert and called a friend I knew would be awake. I gave the shack a wide berth while talking loudly to my friend about how she was coming to meet me. After not too long I got safely back to the campsite and hopped in bed in the caravan. I didn't tell my friend or his family because even though I was scared, there could have been many logical non-threatening answers to what I saw. I put it out of mind and the rest of the trip went off without a hitch. About a year or so later I was talking to my friend about the trip and suddenly remembered the creepy experience. As I told him he slowly got pale though and told me something his brother had told him and his family over breakfast some months after the trip. That same night after I had gotten back and gone to bed, his brother had gotten up late at night to get some water, but when he passed the window right by his bed he saw a man standing right there outside looking in the window. As soon as he was seen, the man left but it definitely creeped out the brother a lot but just like me he seemed to put it out of his mind. Now with both of those stories it doesn't seem far-fetched that the man hiding by the beach shack had followed me back. I really am scared to think about what would have happened if I had been alone. Creepy guy hiding in the garden. So this happened to me when I was 11 or 12 years old, over a decade ago, and I still remember it vividly. At the time I lived in a semi-detached house with my mom, dad, and siblings. It was decent sized, but the most impressive part was the garden, which essentially had three levels. The first level was concrete, the second grass, and the third, also grass, had my trampoline on it. At the very end of the garden was a tree embankment, the area I lived in was somewhat hilly. One morning I woke up to a cracking sound, like a snapped branch, and I was worried since a week earlier a tree from the embankment had fallen onto our neighbor's garden. My bedroom was at the back of the house overlooking the garden, so I opened the curtains to see if another tree had fallen. Instead I saw a guy hiding in one of the trees in the garden. He was pale with blonde hair and wearing all black clothing. He was looking directly at me presumably because he saw the curtains move. He started smirking and moved his finger in a come here motion. I totally freaked out and shouted for my mom and dad to come into my room. I was so scared I physically felt like I couldn't move. This was super early in the morning by the way, around maybe 5 a.m. So it took my dad a good 30 seconds to get in my room at which point the stranger had hid behind the trees. I remember being really shaken up. I was crying whilst I told my dad what happened. He went out into the back garden to see if he could spot the guy but he was gone by that point. A bit of time passed and I'd started to forget about it. Then about three months after, my mom and I were watching TV together after I'd finished school. The doorbell rang and my mom went to answer the door. I looked out the window of the living room where we were sitting and saw a white van parked outside. It was the same van as my uncle's. So I walked out of the living room and into the hallway to say hi to him. When I got to the porch where my mom was standing I realized it wasn't my uncle. It was the same guy I had seen in the garden a few months prior and it really freaked me out. He noticed me as I walked behind my mom and gave me the same smirk as when he was in the garden. I wanted to say something to my mom but I couldn't. I was freaking out inside. Anyway he just asked my mom if she wanted work done on the drive. She said no and he left got back in the van and drove off. He didn't give her a business card or anything, 
The van didn't have any company branding and he didn't knock on any of the neighbor's doors. I told my mom that it was the same guy as soon as he went and she started to feel uneasy about the situation too. A month or so after that I got my first job doing the paper round. I had to deliver over 300 papers with my best friend at the time. It was getting towards winter and it was dark by 4.30 p.m. We'd been doing the job together for around a month. When one evening after school it was super dark and rainy. We were halfway through delivering the newspapers and a van started following us. Driving really slow. At the same pace we were walking, we clocked that it was following us after about a minute. And we started to panic as I noticed it was the same guy again. We left the newspaper trolley and started walking quite fast up the hill. We were about a 10 minute walk from my house. I rang my mom who made me stay on the line while she left the house to meet us. She told us to go to the corner shop that was about a minute away from us. When we made it to the shop the van sped off really fast. The police were called, who came to my house for a report. We told them everything. That was the last time I ever saw the creepy stranger but I still remember what he looked like so vividly. Thanks for watching. If you have nightmares, don't blame me, but you can like the video if you enjoyed and want to see more. And on that note, see you next time.